today I am fixing one of the straps on my rucksack which as you can see is fraying quite badly so this morning just as I was getting back from doing my Saturday morning clean a big self hire van turned up and my downstairs neighbours moved all their stuff out. So they are on their way and I'm really jealous because I would love to be able to just dump all this hate being tied to a property. I don't like this place. I don't like being tied to rent and bills and most of the time I don't think about it because it's what you do. You have to live somewhere, you know. But then see things like downstairs happening. I'm really jealous. I don't know where they're going. I know she said that they were going to go travelling, but if you're going to go travelling, I don't know why you'd pack up all your stuff in that way. I'd just get rid of it all and start again whenever I got back. So, yeah, getting itchy feet. And I've looked at like storage units around here where I am, and they're really cheap. They're like a quarter of the price of the rent I'm paying. And a lot of the stuff that I have here, I wouldn't keep anyway. You know, like furniture, I would just get the charity shop to come and take it away. In the same way that I got them to drop it off when I moved in. I'm going to wait and see what happens with the, the, um, the tenancy renewal that will be... Well, it will come into play in October, but I don't know when I'll get the notice through to make a decision. And I'll use that as my gauge, I suppose. I've talked before in my last post about how, you know, I, it, there will be no point in me moving if I was going to move to somewhere else. Because the rents are comparable. If I was going to move to make the effort worth it, it would have to be like moving back down south and I cannot afford to move back near my parents the prices are astronomical in the southeast it's just not possible unless I was going to move back with my parents and you know everyone keeps saying to me oh why don't you move back with your parents because I don't want to and I don't think my mum would mind at all but my dad I don't think would be that impressed you know, I'm a grown adult, I should be able to look after myself and I can look after myself and just taking that as an easy option because it saves me money is not a solution to anything. So I don't know, I'm just going to have to hang on where I am and just... I've had itchy feet while I've been living here before and wanted to go. But it's just not practical, because what am I going to? If I had a plan, if I knew where I was going, if I knew what I was doing, it would be different. But going for the sake of it, just because, you know, I'd rather not be paying rent somewhere, isn't a good enough reason. You can really burn your bridges that way. If I had a bigger car, or it was...
was viable for me to sell my car and get a van, then I would do van life, at least for a while. But those are not options to me. I don't have the money to get a van. Um, and I'm really into stealth camping, so I'd rather be in a car rather than, you know, rocking up somewhere in a van and making it really obvious that I'm car camping or, you know, a camper van. If you do it in a car, particularly in my car, which is really small, and most people would assume you couldn't possibly stay overnight in, it means that I can self-camp in very residential areas and get away with it. Particularly if you behave. Which I always do. I try to be as discreet as I possibly can. And I've never had a problem. It's just not an ideal situation to sleep in. Oh, this rucksack's a mess. It's falling to pieces. I'm going to have to get a new one, aren't I? This is such a mess, this rucksack. Ugh. Something else I'm going to have to buy. Uh, yeah, the fabric's just shattering. I don't think you can see that. It's just falling to bits. It's so old. This I bought, it had a, um, like a water thing in it. And I bought it because in... 2004 maybe I did the London to Brighton bike ride and I got this because I could have the water in the backpack and it had the um, the tube that would come around and you could drink water while you were cycling so that's how old this is this is uh, a 20 year old 20 year old rucksack and I love this rucksack but you can see the fabric is just like paper thin now. I probably should get a new one. I'm going to get one on Vintage. There are lots of second hand ones on Vintage. I'll have a look today because this is, I'm taking this fabric apart and it's just falling to bits. It's just so old now. So that's that strap. And I'd have to refit it to there, which means losing a lot of strap. But that's all right because I've got the adjusters at the other end. But it's now that the fabric that I would be reattaching it to is just in bits. Look, big hole in there. <sighs> Fell out with buying stuff. Although rucksacks are useful, I'll always have a use for a rucksack. Right, we're going to have a look at Vintage and see what I can find. Something unexpected happened this week. I passed a hard credit check. That hasn't happened to me in years. I don't know how I passed it because I normally fail them. Um, I never get credit cards that involve hard credit checks. I only get them when they're pre-approved. 100% guaranteed acceptance on my credit score company and I saw that um, NatWest were doing an easy access account the interest rates are holding better than my current one Tandem which is pretty dreadful and dropping and I thought well I'll get what I can but you have to apply through Ulster Bank because Ulster and NatWest are kind of joined so you have to get the Ulster Bank current account and then apply for the NatWest Easy Access Saver and you can't get the saver unless you already have an Ulster account so I applied for the Ulster account which requires a hard credit check so that then I can apply for this Easy Access account to replace my Tandem account and I can't believe it they actually approved my application and my account is now effectively open. Now credit scores I don't usually worry about my credit score looks good but it is completely useless because I don't keep a lot of money in my current accounts I've got it all 
earning interest in savings. What's the point of it sitting around in a current account not doing anything? Um, I also rent and rent doesn't count on a credit check. Savings accounts don't count on a credit check. So none of my savings accounts appear on my credit score account. So it looks like I have zero money. But I do have two credit cards because I got pre-approval through ClearScore and I've had those for two and three years now. So to get this was a real, a real surprise and I know it's a hard check because it's appeared in my ClearScore account as someone has done a hard check on me and it says that it's Ulster Bank and they've approved my account. It's I don't know why that's happened because when you look at my credit score account, my circumstances haven't changed. So that's a weird one. I'll take that. It's Sunday morning. My cleans are over for the weekend. Yay! And I have been to Morrison's and had a, a little Sunday morning yellow sticker haul. And I got loads today. My bill... What did my bill come to? My bill came to £11.78 so I'll be interested to see what I've saved on this so first thing I've got is mushrooms these are the deep punnets these were £1.19 uh, 71p each so I got two I also bought this now that was £3 Oh, no, it wasn't. It was two pounds. That was two pounds. This is uh, a meat free chicken and cheese escalop. Two quid for that. However, I only bought it because I got it through Checkout Smart, which is one of the cashback apps, and it was free. So that two pounds has now been paid back. And the great thing is that I've now reached my cash out limit for Checkout Smart, which is £20. So I can now cash all that money in. That's great. I also, more pairs, lots of pairs. These were £2.15 and our 65p. So I bought two. Um, and I also got apples, if I can find them. Braben apples. These were £1.60 down to 48p so I bought two of those so I think I'm going to make an apple and pear crumble because I have nothing for desserts in at the moment um, I also got carrots these were 50p down to 37p got loads of eggs today these were £1.50 they're free range medium size 75p each so I bought three of those because you can never have enough eggs for baking. That's that. I also bought a lettuce. This was 85p down to 42p. I bought something called, I can't even read what it is. It's alioli. It was, it's, it's basically a mayonnaise and garlic dip, which these make really good stirring sauces for some of my lunch dishes. These were £1.35 down to 41p, so I bought two of those. I bought savoured green beans. These were 77p down to 56p, so I bought two of those. Definitely bean season. And lastly, I bought Lancashire Farm Greek style natural yogurt. These were £1.85 each, down to 56p. Can you imagine spending £1.85 on a tub of yogurt? What an absolute joke. So I bought two of those, so that'll go nicely with my crumble when I've made it. As usual, I'll put the information up there. I reckon I've saved a few here. Uh, because I spent a lot of money today, but there's a lot of stuff there. So that's it. That's my Sunday haul done. Gorgeous weather today and tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, but I have jobs to do. And because it's the weekend, everyone's going to be out if the weather's nice, so I'm 
probably going to hide away from all the humans and just do stuff. Got the windows open, it's lovely, and I can get on with stuff in the sunshine. So that's that. I did make my crumble. This is actually day two of crumble, so I've well and truly got stuck into this. Apple and pear crumble is amazing. Goes really well with a dollop of Greek yogurt on the top. So, as of recording this, which is quite a while back in days terms because I've just got such a backlog at the moment my neighbours have effectively moved out and they're downstairs today doing their clean so they're just tidying up the property before they hand back the keys and this morning an even bigger self hire van turned up over the road and someone's moving out of one of the flats over there so I'm constantly being reminded that everybody's leaving <laughs> it's just it's not fair. It's just so not fair. I want to be hitting the road or doing something. My tenancy renewal may be the decision maker. We'll see. Anyway, for now I'm going to just enjoy eating crumble. A bit belatedly, but I finally, finally hit 3,000 subscribers. Um, I've been teetering on that edge of 3,000 for quite a while. It would go up to 2,999, then it would drop to 2,997, and I just stopped looking because it was like it was taunting me. And then I had a look, and it says I'm at th uh, 3,015. So something popped up in the last... A week where I've just gone oh I've stopped looking so thank you very much to all the subscribers and um, it does make a difference um, because you know I realize that some of my videos aren't high traffic the hiking ones have a small but happy audience um, the stuff about universal credit and state pension and all that sort of thing tends to be where the money comes from but I don't want to just make tons of that content just for the sake of numbers although the money is actually quite handy because it is now an income stream so thank you very much um yeah it's great we did it we're there thank you very much cheers today i'm treating myself to a little bit of hair dye i don't dye my hair very often um it's uh gray like but in patches so you only see it at the front not at the back because in the back it seems to be grey underneath but because I always wear my hair down so every so often I just do a tidy up and uh, just fill in the gaps so to speak I don't feel old enough to be grey yet I still feel like I'm somewhere in my 30s um, it's just the way I feel so every so often I treat myself. I bought several boxes of dye with, uh, I think it was gift cards earlier this year, so I stashed it up. And I just do the bits that will show and then blend it in. So I'll show you how that looks when it's done. There we are. There we are, all done. <laughs> I trimmed my fringe a couple of days ago, so... That'll do, yeah. It's Wednesday morning, another clean, it's been 
wet and colder weather, but the plants are happy. So the other day I mentioned about how I had applied for a, a bank account that came with a hard credit check, which I don't often do, and that it had dropped my credit score by 76 points. So that account is now open and as a result of that I've been able to apply and open the Easy Access Savings account which is a better rate than my Tandem account which is now 4.65 as of tomorrow I think it is and this one is paying 5.2 until the 14th of October and then it drops to 4.75 which is still better than the Tandem. The only drawback with that new Easy Access Saver, which is with um, its Ulster Stroke tan, um, NatWest. The only drawback is that the interest is only paid once a year. It's not a big deal. Uh, I can cope with that. One of the other advantages of this account is that it's not just mo mobile banking. I can also bank online. And the reason this is really important is that although I have been considering kind of dumping my Tandem account for a bit because of the interest rates, I love the app. It's just so easy to use, but it's only a digital bank. And for the last month, it's been telling me to update the app. And I've just had this gut feeling that the update isn't going to be compatible with my mobile and so that that savings account got opened and I've started to move the money across and then I went to try and update the tandem app and it says it doesn't work on my mobile phone so I will keep tandem open as it is without updating the app and then once it's finally defunct I'll just get rid of it because I need to get hold of the interest that's due at the beginning of next month. And this is one of the problems with, I always run older mobile phones because they're just as good and they save an absolute fortune. I'm not paying five, six, seven hundred pounds for a mobile phone, it's an absolute joke. So what I tend to do is I buy my mobile phones brand new, but after they've been out for a while. So my S7, which I bought in, 2020 brand new that's a Galaxy uh, Samsung Galaxy S7 I bought new in 2020 but it had been out since 2016 I got a couple of software updates in the first over the first couple of years and then it stopped offering them to me but everything's been fine because I don't use my phone like an idiot um, I don't <coughs> I don't go to dodgy websites or anything like that I have AVG on it and I'm generally careful and I've never ever had a problem. The only problem that happens is when apps that I use on the phone start to become obsolete and then at that point it was like with my Galaxy J3 the only reason I ended up changing it was because some of my major banks obsoleted my phone, mobile phone. Now, one of the things that I love about the Samsung Galaxy is that you're not tied like iPhone. It doesn't obsolete your phone as soon as it's like two years out of date or something or two years down the line. So I've now been running that S7, which came out in 2016, um, for basically eight years. And it's been fine and it's been great. But I'm now reaching that point now where some of the apps are starting to obsolete. So Tandem is now going to be limited and probably not a good idea to keep it because if I keep my savings in it and I lose the app, I'm done for because it's a digital only bank. I also lost one of my good survey apps, which is Your View, uh, which I really enjoyed. They've obsoleted it and I think other things are probably going to start following now. I think it's probably reached that point where I'm now going to have to think about getting myself a new mobile 
probably around or by the end of the year. We'll see what other apps get obsoleted first. So that's my next project. I kind of know what phone I'm going to get. One of the many things that I love about Samsung is that you can take a USB, plug it into a laptop, drop in photos, take off video, all that sort of thing. And I also like that they have an external micro SD card slot. So in my current phone, I have extra memory on that. And on this J3, I have a 128 gigabyte memory drive because I use this one as my, um, as my camera phone. So I've got loads of space for video. I don't run out of room. So I've had a look at Samsung Galaxy phones and they, unfortunately, on the most recent phones, they have got rid of the micro SD card slots. So the last phone that I can buy, which still has them, is the Samsung S20, which came out in 2020. So I think I'm going to get that phone. My last Samsung I bought brand new in 2020, my S7 I got for £180 because it's like four years out of date by the time I buy it. And I reckon I can probably get the S20 for about 220 230 something like that. Um, they do tend to drop in price pretty quickly once they start bringing out new versions of phones. But I always buy them brand new. I, I buy them on eBay or Amazon, depending on who's offered the best price, and I've never had a problem. And I've done that, I think, two or three times now with Samsung, and bought them directly from suppliers who sell vaguely obsolete mobile phones. Never had a problem, so I will do the same thing again. I'll take my time to shop around. I think I'll probably get away with this until the end of the year. And I think that will probably then be my, my Christmas present to myself as a new mobile phone uh, because it'll just become unworkable in the end. And it's one of the reasons I keep as many of my bank accounts with online banking as well as apps because if you lose your app, you lose all your money. So I think Tandem, I think, is the only account that I currently have where I can't also do online banking. And it's one of the reasons I've always kept my very old Halifax bank account open. It doesn't offer me anything really, it's just a, a basic current account. But it's always been a good go-between with other accounts. So if I lose an account, I've always got that one as a go-between. I keep all my other banks on it. And um, it works, does the job and just makes things easier so the only as I say the only drawback I've got with that new Ulster NatWest savings account is that it only pays the interest once a year but it's not going to be so much money that I am in trouble what's it going to pay me 30 quid a month if I'm lucky but I can Put money in and out as often as I like so I can treat it like I did the tandem so all the spare money will go in there and then I can move it around drop it between bank accounts and um, just keep using it like I did the tandem and I can do that with the app at the moment and it's earning a bit more interest if it probably sounds like a lot of hard work to some of you like oh why would you bother doing that but it makes money I mean you know, you could be talking three or four hundred pounds worth of interest in a year if you do it like that. And I think it's it's worth it for me. You know, I'll have made about twelve hundred in interest this year across all my savings accounts. And I've got some regular savers. And I know some people have said there's no point in having regular savers. It's such a tiny amount of money. But literally every penny counts. And I can just keep shifting money around making the most of what I've got, using the drip feed method which I've talked about before where you have money in uh, not maybe not a great 
it, uh, savings account and then each month you take out a small amount of it put it into a higher interest so it's already made its money in the slightly lower interest and then it makes money on the higher and then it when that account matures or whatever you bring it all back in and put it back into the other savings account so it's always earning interest and none of my current accounts have any money in them except where they're paying bills and I always make sure that the balance is still in the positive for when it comes to paying bills uh, because we don't want any accounts to bounce but I don't mind I have the time and the energy and the interest to do this I, it's why I run so many spreadsheets and why I, I run you know very detailed spreadsheets so I always know what needs to be moved around if I need to remind myself to pay something I'll stick it into my calendar or my little uh, Google calendar and a little reminder will pop up saying you've got to do this today and um, it's fine you know it's like being a bit of a bank manager I don't have a problem with that I like making the money that I've got I don't have an enormous amount of money but what I've got I'm gonna make it work for me I've locked away all the money that I can now um, at the moment because I don't know what's happening with my with my rental renewal which will be the notice will be due any time now but the rent won't begin until the middle of October I don't know how much that's going to go up so I need to be careful and make sure that I still have enough positive balance to keep paying everything regularly and cover that money because um, as I've mentioned before my rent goes out every six months because I don't pass the credit checks for rental so it's a year's rental and I pay six months at the beginning of the first six months and six months at the beginning of the second six months. So I need to have access to that chunk of money. So I'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. I'm expecting that to come through any time in the next month. And then I will be able to plan a little bit more in terms of, you know, if any fixed savings accounts come up. But with the, with the interest rates going down, everything is starting to drop. So it's a case of you grab what you can because even those regular savers which are fixed interest rates and one of them is eight percent and but it's only a small amount of money because I'm only putting in like 200 a month but once all the other accounts have dropped down to like you know 4.6 and 4.5 percent and some of them are really dreadful at the moment literally every penny now counts so I'm making it work hard for me so I'm about to go in and do my clean. <clears throat> These two people that I do the clean for, this elderly couple, I get stuck in the middle of so many arguments. They are sick of the sight of each other, these two. And most of it is health related. So he should have had knee, his knees replaced like 15 years ago. He can barely walk now and he still refuses to have it done. And the doctor had a... Um, a chat with him last week about it and he told me that he's begun the process to have it done and then he told his wife he's not having it done and I don't know whether he's telling me that to shut me up although I don't nag him it's not my place to or whether he's told her that to annoy her because they really annoy each other and I think they get enjoyment for it. They've got nothing else in their lives. Neither of them can hardly leave the house now. So they're stuck with each other all day. They sit there all day eating crisps and biscuits. Their health is deteriorating. They watch rubbish TV. They're glued to the news. Um, it's just awful. And their families, apparently, they've both told me equally that each side of their family is, is sick of them and doesn't want to be involved with them because of the constant moaning I don't know I get two different sides of different stories but it's always the way when I'm there when it's both of them in the room it's a normal conversation as soon as one of them leaves the other one will start moaning to me about the other one and it happens both ways so it's constant thank god it's only three hours a week and it's a constant reminder to me to look after my health remain mobile and don't be dependent on somebody else <laughs> because I don't want to end up like that you know, you take control of your life. Because I don't want to end up like that and spend the last 10, 15, 20 years of my life just sitting there, unable to do anything. Um, trapped in, in my own body, in my own health. It's just dreadful. It's depressing. Anyway, so I'm going to go off and do this clean. And uh, I'll catch you later.
today was the return of Kinder Treats. A pack of four of these was £1.50. One pound back with Shopmium when I bought this in Poundland. So that's quite a nice little treat. Yesterday, my neighbours downstairs were back. Their contract hasn't quite finished, so they're doing their clean up. And I was coming back from my Wednesday clean, so I knocked on the door and said hello. And to go in travelling. The lucky devils are going travelling. So she's got to wind up her work contract, which I think is going to be a month, a couple of months or something. And they're just putting money together and so we were chatting about, she was talking about um, still bringing in money while they're travelling. I'm talking about doing hybrid work because she's worked remotely for a long time anyway. And um, I think she used to do stuff like coding and things like that. So she was talking about doing like computer-based work, but kind of working wherever she is when she's travelling. And lots of people do that now. So it's a really good way to keep some money coming in while you're travelling. So that was cool. Today the ex-boyfriend has been in downstairs um, picking up the last of his stuff. And as a parting gift I was subjected to his singing. He's only been here picking some stuff up. Why he has to stand in there and sing, I have no idea. And he still can't sing. So I've had to turn the sound on the laptop up and the podcasts to drown him out, um, so hopefully he'll be gone soon. And <laughs> that's it, really. Uh, that's the end of this update. I think I've uh, I've probably said enough for for one for one week. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, I try and do one of these a week. Depends on how much is going on. Um, things are fairly quiet at the moment. I tend to do things which are like bigger stuff like the walks and very specific things in separate separate vlogs so they're easier to find and then I just do the bits and pieces here so there's a whole variety of various bits and pieces that might tickle your fancy so thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting and all that sort of stuff and um, I'll talk to you again soon thanks for watching bye bye